refining your job search and job opportunities in your career field, marketing your skills and knowledge, including uh, on how to present your uh, at job interviews and CVs and cover letters, and also maybe most importantly, building those soft intangible skills, including leadership, teamwork, communication, as well as professional attitudes that will serve everybody. Uh, so to cover all these very interesting topics, I would now like to briefly introduce you to today's presenter, Dr. Ranil Sugatudasa. Uh, engineer Dr. Ranil Sugatudasa is a motivational and mindset mastery expert, leadership and management trainer and transformational coach who has helped over 500,000 people in over 400 plus organizations locally and internationally. He's a chartered civil engineer and a senior lecturer attached to the engineering faculty at the University of Moritua. Uh, Dr. Ranil has over 20 years of multidisciplinary ex experience as an engineer, senior commercial manager, entrepreneur, and consultant locally and overseas. So uh, before I just hand over to Dr. Ranil, just one last thing. Uh, if you do have any questions during uh, today's session, please include them in the chat box and we will collect them towards the end of the session and have a brief Q&A towards the end of the session. So please uh, uh, feel free to uh, have your questions uh, in the chat box and we will uh, sort through them towards the end of the session. Okay, Dr. Rania, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you and uh, I go on very good morning, uh, town planners, country planners and the professionals. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, speak to you today in the morning. Uh, and uh, I must be thankful to uh, the president, madam, uh, Diana, uh, uh, Devastriya, uh, Dev, uh, Diana, uh, Devastriyani Jayasundara, uh, and, uh, and uh, the uh, committee to invite me uh, in this uh, great uh, occasion. And, and it's always a pleasure to talk to professionals uh, and, and because uh, they can do a great job in uh, bringing uh, our country to the next level uh, and, 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 and planet to the next level, a more sustainable level. So, so it's a pleasure to talk to you all, my dear friends. So we must actually spend this uh, two hours in a very, very jolly mode because adults education, adults learning is only possible with jolly mode. So this must be an interactive session rather than me talking to you all the time. And so I ask a little questions uh, once in a while in the, through the chat box. So you should be able to, you know, interact with me. That's very, very important, right? Having said that, uh, so uh, uh, just uh, let me ask a small question. How many of you uh, thank your profession during the day today? During the day today, this is nine o'clock in the morning. Is there anybody? who has thanked your profession, town and country planning profession. Anybody? Please, if you thank your profession during the day, today in the morning, please type yes, I did in the chat box. Anybody who thank your profession during the day today? Yes, there is uh, one gentleman, planner, Hemanta Jayasundar. Amazing. There is another, uh, I think she's a lady, uh, the, uh, Miss Article and 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 Miss or Mr. Or Mrs. Lisa Naika, Planner Lisa Naika. Amazing. There are three. There are three. Who else? Yes. yes. There is another person, uh, Miss Bindi. Uh, she also said she has thank four out of probably 120. And there is another planner. There is another planner. There are a couple of. That's amazing. My dear friends. It's very important that you love your profession. You are proud of your profession. Despite my now, now my main focus is training and development. I love being an engineer. I love my profession. I'm so thankful that I'm an engineer. So when I start being thanking that I'm an engineer, I bring the skills that I learned in engineering to training and development especially the analytical skills. That's, that's why I'm a different trainer. So my dear friends, you have to be thankful to your profession, right? So please type in the chat box. I'm so thankful that I'm a town planner. I'm so thankful that I'm a town planner. Please type in the chat box. Please type in the chat box. 
I am so thankful that I'm a town planner. Please type it in the chat box. Because the starting point of all the happiness and success is in your profession is actually this, with this, with this starting with the point where you are thanking your profession. You must be proud of your profession. How and country planning is a great profession, my dear friends. It is not going to be second to any other profession. It's a profession which can add lots of value to sustainability, the development of a country, and the development of towns, helping people all around the country and the world. So it's, it's an amazing profession. It's a great profession. It's not going to be second to any other profession. You must be so thankful to your profession. He said, I'm so thankful that I'm a town and country planner. I'm so thankful that I'm a charter town planner. I'm so thankful that I'm in the field of town and country planning. I'm so thankful to my profession. I love my profession. Because when you start loving your profession, when you like start having a pride about your profession, when you start actually respecting your profession, you start applying your profession. Unless you respect your profession, you never ever 100% apply your profession. When you start respecting your profession, when you start loving your profession, you start applying your profession uh, to the mankind. And when you start applying your profession to the mankind, you automatically unleash your potential. You automatically come into the next, 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 next levels. And as a result of that, you automatically Go in your career ladder. As a result of that, end of the day, you will be popular as a great out and country planning professional. That's very, very important. The starting point is thank your profession. I'm very happy to see that. I think I'm getting so many, I know, answers in the chat saying that I'm so thankful to my profession. I'm so thankful that I'm a town planner. That's very, very important, my dear friends. Because what happens is when you until you become a town planner, you desperately want that. Once you become a town planner, you slowly start hating it. It's common to other professions as well. Once somebody becomes an engineer, you really want to be an engineer. And once you become an engineer, you hate becoming an engineer. Once you become a doctor, you hate becoming a doctor. Once you become an accountant, you hate becoming an accountant. That's the way where our brain is trained through the evolution process of millions of years we always count the negativities we always count the risks we always see the good in other professions and bad in our profession we all you always seems to be see the good in engineering architecture medicine Maybe law and accounting, probably you may see lots of gaps in your profession. That is quite common to all the other professions, my dear friends. Many doctors, they don't like their job, medical doctors. Many engineers, they don't like their job. Similarly, I'm sure it's common to you as well. If you agree with my point, please type, please type in the chat box. I do agree with you. Please type in the chat box. I do agree with you. Because this is how the human brain is trained right you always see the you know negativities of your profession but see the possibilities of all the other professions around you and 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 as a result of that you never ever enjoy your profession and you never ever try to do the best uh, from your profession to the mankind and as a result of that you feel like stuck you feel like you are underutilized you feel like you have just in a wrong profession you feel like you are not lucky enough you feel like uh, you are not you know, I mean, in the right field and you are, you may not be able to achieve your dreams as a person. So this is the reality, my dear friends. So the starting point is loving your profession, right? I, I think when, when you ask a, a profile of mine, I said, I'm engineer doctor because my profession is engineer. I, I love it because I love it. I apply it everywhere including training and development. And, and my dear friends, and my, my dear friends, what are the opportunities we have as town planners, town and country planners? Please type in the chat box. What are the opportunities we have as town and country planners? Please type in the chat box. What are the opportunities we have? 
as town and country planners in Sri Lanka, in the global level? What are the opportunities? Please type as, I mean, just don't think too much. Just type what you feel. What are the opportunities we have? Yeah, there are un unlimited opportunities, of course. Can you name few? Can you name few, please? What are the opportunities we have? You can become a town planner. You can become a country planner. What else? Career opportunities. I'm talking about career and other opportunities. You have. You can become a town planner. You can be a country planner. Yes, of course, as planner presenter says, you can become a project manager. That is amazing. And then you can contribute to the development of country. That is amazing, as planner Dilhari says. And you can be a part of development process of the country. That is amazing. And, and you can be in the real estate sector, as planner Somanatha says. And we can interact with many layers in the society, as uh, uh, planner Articula says. And you can become an impact specialist, as uh, planner Ekanayaka says. How many more? So many more to say, my dear friends. There are so many opportunities around. Already have a name few. Uh, you can engage in national policy planning, as plan Ekanayaka says, and, and to work for the people, as plan Priyani says. So what more? What more? That is amazing. And, uh, and, and this is a multidisciplinary profession, and there are multidisciplinary opportunities, as uh, plan Galamba says, and, 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 and as plan Fonseca says, you can become a decision maker, and, and, and you can contribute to the national build, uh, nation building, as plan Hema uh, says, and as plan Perera says, you can always contribute to the uh, uh, MBL sector better, and you can become a project manager. There are more opportunities, my dear friends. I know that you have already named 20 plus opportunities. I'm sure there are 100 plus opportunities. Why don't you brainstorm yourself and come out with the answers? You can contribute to guide the development as a better, better thing. You can contribute and participate for the development of country. Uh, we can see the cities and their roles in different uh, aspiration. That is amazing. And, and can be politician too. Of course, why not one planner will become a minister? Probably Prime Minister, probably the President of Sri Lanka. Of course, why not, my dear friends? You can you can choose politics also. How about other, other opportunities? Please, please brainstorm. You can go to military as planner. Prasanna says, of course, yes. What are the other opportunities, my dear friends? Already you have said so many opportunities, but I believe there are 100 plus more opportunities for town and country planners, my dear friends. Please, please brainstorm. This is, because it's a great opportunity to brainstorm. Because, I mean, if it, it's coming from your mouth, it is coming from your heads. It is coming from your hearts. I mean, that looks amazing. That's why I'm not saying it. There are so many opportunities for town and country planning. As you mentioned, there are so many opportunities and more opportunities to discover also. More opportunities to discover also. My dear friends, the world is full of problems. The world is full of problems right full of problems right poverty not having good drinking water solid based issue congested cities social social economic problems due to bad city planning scarcity of lands rising of the sea levels some countries may affect like Maldives energy issues Social economic problems, food issues, transport problems, and you have a role in all these problems. You have a role in all these global problems, which means you have ample opportunities across the globe. You have ample opportunities across the globe because globally there are so many burning issues. Locally there are so many burning issues and, and most of these burning issues can be solved using knowledge and your knowledge as a town and country planner is immensely important in solving many of these problems in the global level, my dear friends. If you agree with me, please type, I agree with you. Please type, I agree with you, right? Because world is full of problems, including COVID. And many of these problems 
town and country planner can add lots of value. Right? Most of these problems can be solved with the knowledge of engineers, knowledge of planners, and, and, and the policy making level people uh, uh, as well. Not medical doctors. Of course, in the COVID, scientists can help, medical doctors can help, but when it comes to the global issues, many problems can be sorted out by multidisciplinary approach where the inputs of town and country planning is immensely important, my dear friends. Let me take a simple problem. Sometimes back, in London, there was a civil engineer and he actually noticed the average age of London, London citizens, Londoners, were around 35 to 40. And uh, it is basically a problem with healthcare. But the civil engineer thought differently. He asked himself, how can I improve the average age of London air? He asked a very good question. How can I improve the lifespan of Londoners at least by some years so that you know Londoners can live happily with their family more time? A civil engineer asked this question from him. And he decided to become a solver of this problem. He analyzed this issue. Why London has having limited lifespan. He analyzed this and realized that it's because of diarrhea, cholera, and many other stomach related diseases caused by poor drinking water and the problem of sanitation management. And the civil engineer decided to become a specialist sanitary engineer. And did that decision, he devoted his energy, brain, experience to solve this problem, to give a solution to the sanitation problem of London Air. And he developed a system. My dear friends, the civil engineer was able to increase the lifespan of London Air by 20 years. How many years? Please type. How many years? How many years? 20 years. Is it a great merit or not? An engineer helping Londoners to increase their lifespan by 20 years. What a meaningful contribution to the society. Ultimately, this engineer is named as London's engineer by the Queen. Because he solved one problem in London. And in fact, Sri Lanka used the same system for management of sewerage until late 1980s. And 1980s or early 1990s, Sri Lanka brought down new system, more advanced electronic system and that system start giving so much of problems to the, to the issue, eating so much of billions of Sri Lankan rupees because the previous system was very easy to maintain and the new system with electronics was very tough to maintain. That's a different story. But my point is, if that person could have been the London's engineer, I think you have the same opportunity as town planner to become a role model, unique person in solving something in Sri Lanka, right? That is very, very important. If you are inspired from this engineer's point, uh, piece of work as a town planner, please type, I am inspired. Please type, I am inspired. Please type, I am inspired. Amazing. That is amazing. And some of you now feel like this Rani Sukhadas has come here and talking about an engineer. 
So he is disrespecting town and country planning. If you think like that, that is simply professional jealousy. Actually speaking, we have to admire all the professions. When you admire London's engineer, you get the same mindset. Oh, town and country planner. As a town planner, what can I do to Sri Lanka? What can I do to uh, solve global problems? So when you are inspired, if you are truly inspired, 100% inspired from this London engineer story from your heart, which means you are also getting that mindset, the mindset of helping others, my dear friend. Success is depending on, not on selfishness, but rather the mindset of helping others. This London engineer, he was having a great mindset called helping mindset. His heart was filled with my metta, kindness, Mudita and Uveksa to help Londoners. Because his heart was filled with that, he really wanted to become a specialist sewer age engineer and devote his uh, life to that. And as a result of that, he became London's engineer personally and he was able to solve a global problem, my dear friends. Similarly, if you are inspired from this you know, story, you must Clean your heart with helping mindset. How can I help my profession? Right? I noticed the coordinators of this program, they were so energetic. They actually called me two, three, four times. They sent me a few emails. I never seen this type of enthusiasm in any other companies or organizations. I'm truly happy about your organizing company, my dear friends. Right? And that's their helping mindset. Helping mindset and helping heart towards the town and country planning or town planning institute. So your heart must be filled with helping mindset, helping uh, heart set so that you feel like how can I help the society? How can I help to solve this uh, congestion in Colombo? How can I help Sri Lanka? How can I help policy decision making? How can I help solving global problems? How can I help to make this uh, country world a beautiful one? How can I help to protect the environment? How can I help to other professions so that they can actually get our inputs to, to great projects, probably civil engineers, engineers, architects, etc. How can I work with other professionals in harmony so that we can work together? How can I help my juniors to become chartered town planners? How can I help my seniors to keep their energy and motivation? How can we help each other? How can we help the you know lady town planners to you know to, uh, so become great town planners? How can we help the male town planners to become great town planners? So this must be the way. If you agree with me 100 percent please type 100 percent agreed. Please type 100 percent agreed. Actually, when it comes to when it comes to your progress, it's nothing else. How much of great hard brain you have? According to the latest neuroscience, according to the latest neuroscience, you have three brains. One is head brain. One is head brain. This head brain has three components. The left side of the head brain helps you to think analytically, mathematically, logically. It helps you to write great emails. It helps you to you know, prepare great presentations, great reports, great plans, great organizing, great town planning, and all this knowledge can be applied from the left side of your head brain. And the right side of your head brain is basically creativity and imagination. If you want to become a genius in town planning, you must use your right brain. Otherwise, you will become an average town planner. You just become average town planner. Probably you might become chartered town planner, even PhD in town planning. But if you are only using a left brain, you are an average town planner. If you really want to become a genius town planner, you have to use your right brain. 
which brings your creativity and innovation. Creativity and innovation is very important for you to think differently, think outside the box, think from another box, solve problems innovatively, create uh, rather than talking about the problem, bring out, come out with options for solving problems creatively, economically, sustainably, so that you know it, it, it really become a beautiful solution. Actually speaking, for that your right brain is very very important. At your right brain, I say I love my right brain with me. At your right brain, and say I love my right brain. Today onwards, I'm going to use my creativity and imagination. Even Albert Einstein, the greatest scientist, he says. Knowledge is not very important. What is important is creativity and imagination. As a town and country plan, I'm, I'm sure you must have creativity and imagination. And you ever thought you have a job role in Mission to Mars with Elon Musk? Elon Musk is a creative engineer, right? He has a mission to Mars. Do you have a role in Mission to Mars? If you think yes, please type yes. If you think yes, please type yes. Do you have a do you have a role in NASA? Do you have a role in Mission to Mars? Yes, you have a role. Can you name the role? What is that role? Yes, if Elon Musk is going to be successful in the Mission to Mars, you have to become the town planner in Mars, my dear friends. You have to dream very big. You have to think very big, and you have to think outside the box. So even NASA is one of the opportunity for you, my dear friends. Don't think that only engineers and scientists can work in NASA. Even town and country planners can work in NASA. Because if one day Mars is going to be, you know, going to be a place to live, town planner has, has a role. Otherwise, it will become a place like planet Earth with lots of congested cities. Where only the town planners can do great insights to make it a great place to live, my dear friends. Right? Isn't that out of the box thinking? If it is out of the box thinking coming from me, please type it's out of the box thinking, right? Please type it's out of the box thinking. Because, because town planners can work in NASA. Why not? Why not? Why not? It is possible, my dear friends. It's possible. Maybe and if you use your right brain, my dear friends, you can become entrepreneurs. are simply people with great hearts. If you take Bill Gates, he quit engineering because he had a greater vision to help the mankind. Bill Gates really, really wanted to simplify the software so that anybody, any human being can use a compu computer to, to uh, elevate the human kind, elevate the quality of life to the next level. Earlier, the computers were only used by engineers and scientists. Bill Gates had a dream to simplify the software, ensure that he can contribute to elevate the standards of the mankind. As such, he quit engineering and he focused on his dream because he has a great heart brain to help the people. As an indirect result of that, Bill Gates became an entrepreneur and one of the world's rich most person, rich most person. He never wanted to become that. He, he became rich most person as a byproduct of helping mindset and great heart. If you take Marcus Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, the founder of Facebook, he never, I don't think he wanted to become a billionaire out of that. He was an engineering student. He wanted to ensure that he wanted to actually uh, connect the busy friends together using some system. As such, with that help in mindset, with that help in heart, he uh, thought about something new and he came out with Facebook and became a youngest billionaire in the world. So why not town planners? become entrepreneurs. It's the opportunity. Town planners can become entrepreneurs, right? You can become entrepreneurs. It's very, very, very good opportunity. And Sri Lanka is a country with 2,500 years of history. Why not town planners can use the plannings uh, used in Bologna, Anuradhapura and so on to ensure that Sri Lanka is going to be one of the world's number one tourist destination. It cannot be done by tourism people. It can only be done by town planners and engineers. If you agree with me, please type, I agree with you. Why not you, you analyze our, you know, Bolandarwa, uh, Anuradhapura in scientific way and, and, and present it in a way that 
high end tourist will come here and 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 and, and, and Sri Lanka will become a, a tourist tourist destination, one of the greatest tourist destination. I think the, the role here is for town planners, right? Any of you research about Sigiriya and how how it, its town is planned that way? It's very important, my dear friends, right? It's very important. And why not? There are so many engineers in the CEO positions in the country, in the global level. When you, if you take globally, if you take global best 500 companies, almost 400 companies, the CEOs are engineers. Why not? Town planners become CEOs. If you take engineer Professor Malik Transinda, former chairman of Sampad Bank, a civil engineer. If you take engineer Professor Ananda Javardhana, current deputy chairman of Commercial Bank, a civil engineer. If you talk, talk, take engineer Dr. Hannes Vijay Surya, the manager of the dialogue, an engineer, right? Right? If you take, I mean, so many engineers are in the field of business as CEOs, managing directors. Why not town and country planners? Why not? What is your problem not to become a CEO? What is your strength to become a CEO? Please type in the chat box. What is your greatest strength to become a CEO? Please type in the chat box. What is your greatest strength to become a CEO? Please type in the chat box. Business minded. Engineer planner, thank you very much. But I disagree because I don't think you have that uh, business content in your syllabus. Analytical thinking, probably yes, to a good extent. Upgrade the infrastructure of small cities to a good, to a some extent. Fear, I can understand planner. Pereira, what you really want to mean. Uh, multidisciplinary training. Yes, of course. It is actually multidisciplinary training. Ability to see the big picture, helicopter view. I think you are trained to see the big picture, helicopter view. Engineers are trained to see the micro picture. Architects are trained to see the micro picture. Accountants are trained to see the micro picture. But town and country planners are trained to see the big picture. And, and as such, why not? You can be a CEO of a company. It's the scene, it's the ability to see the big picture, imagination ability, problem solving ability, and multidisciplinary you know, exposure and, and strategic planning abilities. So I think you are so much suited to become a CEO. So why don't you take, probably some of you take corporate careers. Why, why don't you go to business to help support the business, sustainable business? So I think there is lots of opportunity. So I, I would like to see some town planners becoming CEOs, at least in the next five years, right? May, probably there can be one or two, but I'm saying that in general, I don't see, I, I haven't seen town planners have become CEOs in business organization. What I'm trying to emphasize is that, that it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity. And you can join director boards. Maybe after your retirement, you can join director boards of uh, public companies, public quoted companies, private companies, or even uh, semi-government companies as a town planner, as a country planner. It is it's an opportunity. If you agree with me, I don't know whether I'm, I'm just, you know, putting some thoughts to your head, which, is, which you think it's not practical. If you think what I'm talking is practical, please type, you are talking practical. If you don't think, please type, I don't think it's practical. I mean, please tell me that that's always possible. If you think I'm not practical, say I'm, you are not practical. If you think I'm practical, say you are practical. End of the day, my dear friends, everything is mind. Mano pubbanga madamma, manas siyalu deeta piratu gamankarai. If you think you can be a business leader, you can be a business leader because by training you have the helicopter view of uh, thinking, a multidisciplinary exposure, a planning abilities, strategic thinking, a creativity and imagination, and why not you become a corporate leader? End of the day, it's mind. But if your mindset is not possible, it's not possible. But what my task today is basically exploring you, my dear friends. Exploring you, right? Exploring you. And, and, and when it comes to this London's engineer, he was a civil engineer and he really wanted to become a specialist sewer age engineer to help the mankind. Now, I want an answer from you. There's an answer, practical, not in this country. No, I disagree with you. 
I disagree with you, my dear friend. As long as you should be able to work with anybody, even with evil, that's the talent. In this country, anything is practical. As long as we are determined, we are not giving up, we have a great dream, then the resistance from the others, and we have strategies. Right? What happens is we give up. We start and we give up. I'd say that it's not possible in our country. It's possible. Of course, it needs more energy than in America. It needs more energy than Singapore. It needs more energy than US, UK, but still it's possible. I agree. It might need more energy. My dear friends, now, as London's engineer, he really want to serve the mankind and become a specialist sewer engineer. Now, please type in the chat box, the field you want to enter, the subfield of town and country planning, the specialty of town and country planning, or even outside the box, the field you really want to enter in the next five years, after your retirement. Maybe while you are doing the job, you want to try another field simultaneously, which is not having conflict of interest. Okay, plan a chintaka says political. Great. We want professionals in the politics. I congratulate plan a chintaka. Writing, that is amazing. That is amazing. Monitoring and evaluation, plan a prasanna says, that is again great. Creative production, that is said by plan a ratnayaka, that is amazing. That is amazing. Social leader, set by planner Priyani, that is amazing. Legal, set by legal, planner Sarat Chandra. Til uh, planner Tilak says, foreseen, amazing. Planner Hemamali says, remarkable development, that is amazing. Planner Vijay Ratunga says, uh, he, uh, that, uh, he, she, he or she wants to become corporate business, that's amazing. That's amazing. I want more answers. I think some of you are stuck. You don't know how to answer. Planner Vindya says uh, she wants to be cafe owner. That is amazing. That's amazing. Out of the box, completely out of the box, and she wants to go to a new field. Why not? Why not, my dear friend? Why not? And understand the real problems. Planner Tilak says. Planner Chandri says entrepreneur. Planner uh, Dora Kapoor says policy making. Planner Abhirami says lecturer. And Planner Ratnayak says creative. That's amazing. So if, if you decide like that, that's amazing, my dear friends, because you have to understand that you should choose the field which you love, some specialty which you love. It's a path. It's a path. You have to choose a sub specialty. You have to understand what I love to do. What I love to do, then it's a one part, then there's another part, what I am good at, what I am good at, okay, what I love to do, what I am good at, then there's another part. What are the opportunities? Opportunities. There are three parts. So actually, if you can use your, if you can use your analytical left brain to understand what I love to do, you have to use analytical left brain and your heart brain. According to the latest neuroscience, your heart brain has neurons. It has a memory. This is your head brain and it has three components. The left side, the right side and the middle side is intuition. Ever. And this is your heart brain. It has a memory. And your third brain is inside your stomach. It's called a stomach brain. 
it has a memory the stomach brain will give you confidence and when it comes to jack welch well so far the best ceo a chemical engineer by profession he wrote this book winning bill gates says if you read only one management book in your life read winning warren buffett says no other management book will ever be needed here this is a book written by engineer jack welch former ceo of general electric in this book he said repeatedly he made most of the critical decisions from his stomach because you have to use the brain to analyze this brain to think creatively and imagination this brain to think, think intuitively this brain to understand the problems understand the difficulties of the people understand the problems to solve and understand the people and this brain to take action some professionals they don't have this brain they have only this brain part of this brain the left side of the brain some professional their brains are not at all working actually speaking they only have qualifications after getting the qualification they are not using the left brain at all they are not using any way the right brain they are not using the intuition they are not using the heart they are not using the guts actually speaking if you take great pamakan bahu it's sri lanka's leader who has used all three brains great pamakan bahu said don't let any single drop of water going to sea without using asking better ekama diya kona kwa pamchira kara apade avande pa and we understand that statement that way our teachers explain that statement that way but that statement has a better meaning actually great anakram bahu is talking about growth mindset growth mindset he is talking about rain i agree but he is talking something beyond that what he says that don't let any single opportunity to go away use it save every cent use each one of your energy to serve the country go to the mission use each and every brain to serve the street country serve the world serve your family use each one of your heart to dream big understand people understand the issues solve them and great parakram bahu ultimately ensured that sri lanka becomes number one in the world map he made sri lanka beat the greenery of asia melika danya gare he was able to capture even some countries which actually challenge us military wise he was having the best navy he was exporting the grains to the middle east he was exporting many other things to asia and then he he became a premier king my dear friends because he had a great heart brain to dream very big dream very big and he had great head brain to plan and analyze and think creatively and he had guts to take action without fear as a professional you must activate all these three brains my dear friends without which you can't climb up the ladder without which you can't actually solve problems without which you can't be a great leader without which you can't unleash your potential so it's head brain heart brain and gut brain And, and and when it comes to you you should find what i love to do through your heart what i love to do i am a specialist in cement and concrete i am a specialist in project management i am a specialist in construction supply chain risk management but of course now i fully focus on something entirely different what i love to do i am actually enjoying my hobby with you all now and today i have four training sessions and during these four training sessions i am enjoying my hobby and this is my hobby this is what i love to do of course i practice engineering a little bit as a consultant as a senior lecturer but i devote most of my time to what i love to do because it gives me energy and it's it's how i can help the mankind and you should find what i love to do you should find what you are good at just because you love to do something if you are not good at that you can't become like that and if you are not good at something you can improve your skills you can improve your knowledge to make sure that you are good at that point field what i love to do what i do that we are here to use your brain and you are to see what are the problems in the industry what are the opportunities i have
when all these three nodes meet together, it's the ideal career. Ideal career. Ideal career. Ideal career. It's the ideal career. Right? It's the ideal career. What I love to do, what I'm good at, and what are the opportunities. Actually speaking, in the in this practical world, all these three, three nodes doesn't meet together instantly. You have to use your creativity and imagination because these three nodes may, two nodes may meet here and there's not, the other one may go now. And they are, what you have to do is, you have to make the little adjustment here and there to ensure that you compromise on what you love, you compromise on what you are good at, you, you meet to solve problem in the society. End of the day, problem in the society is the only fixed thing. And you might have to be a little flexible to take what I love to do. You might have to be a little flexible to improve your skill set so that what I am good at. Because the problems in the world is fixed. And, and if you don't solve it, somebody else will solve it. If our planners don't solve one of the problems in the society, I'm sure the engineers will solve it before you. Or architects will solve it before you. Or accountants will solve it before you. Or politicians will solve it before you. If you agree with me, please type, I agree 100%. Or 90% or 0%. You can, you can be independent, actually speaking. You can put your number, right? Because end of the day, you have to understand what I love to do, what I'm good at, and what what we are exactly the opportunities are where exactly the opportunities are amazing that is amazing my dear friends okay now tell me now tell me you have to now take action my dear friends you have to now take actions without taking actions you can't move there you even one day might die without doing what you love because you postpone it, you postpone it, you postpone it, you postpone it. So you have to now take action. So when it comes to taking action, the starting point of the peak performance is nothing else, the self-love, give yourself a hug, give yourself a hug. And say, I love me. Yourself hug and say, I love me. Now you might feel that how can I love me? I am stuck in a government organization. I am stuck in a semi-government organization. I couldn't buy my dream car. My kids are not putting adequate effort to study, so I'm unhappy. My spouse is not working as I want, so how can I love me? Country is not going in the way that I thought, how can I love me? COVID is everywhere, how can I love me? You might get all this, you might get all these things, but my dear friends, if you want to be happy and successful, you have to love you unconditionally. You have to love you unconditionally. Despite the circumstances around you, despite the circumstances around your career, despite the circumstances around your life, despite the circumstances around the country, despite the circumstances around your organization, despite the circumstances around COVID, you have to love you 100%. So please give yourself a hug. I love me. And please type in the chat box. I love me 100%. Don't write 90%. There, I must want this answer. I must, I love me 100%. Don't write, I love me 90%. If you love me, if you say you love me, you love you only 90%, you have a problem, actually speaking. Of course, each one of us are having problems, but still, you have to love you 100% if you really want to ensure that you have to, you really want to make your life to the next level, your career to the next level, you really want to unleash your potential. You have to love you 100%. That's very, very important. I love me 100% despite the circumstances around me. I love me 100% despite the circumstances around me. That's very, very important, my dear friend. That's very, very important. 
That's very, very important. And, and when you start loving you 100%, you start trying to be the best that you can be because you love your name. When you start loving you, you start lo loving your name. When you start loving your name, you start loving your profession, you start loving your Im improving yourself, you start loving going to the next level, you start loving improving your skills, you start loving becoming a better person, you start loving contributing to the society, you start loving doing something to the mankind, you start loving uh, helping the country, you start loving helping your village, you start loving helping your profession, and all the other things start when you start loving yourself. When you start loving yourself, you, you do start doing all the other things. You can't love your family. You can't love your family. You can't love your uh, you know, profession. You can't love your uh, country unless you love yourself, my dear friends. You have to love you 100%. That's why Lord Buddha says, you method yourself first. Even Jesus Christ says, loving kindness. Even Muhammad Prophet says, loving kindness. That's very important. You have to love you. And my dear friends, to love you, you have to clean your heart. I know that you are bathing every day. You are washing your body every day. But how frequently do you wash your heart? How frequently you wash your heart? If you feel jealous about your colleague town planner, if you feel jealous about your colleague professional in engineering, architecture, medicine, law, accounting, if you feel the competition inside you, if you feel you are not worthy enough, how can you love you? Practice mentha. Even the other people are attacking you. Spread mentha. Kindness. Even the Lord Buddha was attacked. Devuda came and attacked him. Kinchimanika came and said she is pregnant because of him. Even Jesus Christ was attacked. Even Muhammad Prophet was attacked. So this is quite natural being attacked. But you had to extend mitta, loving kindness to everyone, including those who tend to trouble you. You have to clean your heart. You have to love everybody. You have to understand everybody. That's very, very important. That's how you activate your heart brain. When you fill your heart with metta, kindness, mudita, you feel like helping the society. When you feel like helping the society like London's engineer Bill Gates or Marcus Zuckerberg, your brains will give you the options. These options will bring you to the career ladder. If you really want to live in your career, focus on help as to how to help others. Don't be selfish. If you focus on how to help others, you will be elevated. So don't focus too much about your career. Focus on how can I help the society. How can I solve problems? How can I help the mankind? When you make that focus, you try to find, oh, what I would, what I would at doing, what I love to do. So I choose this thing to help the society. So to do that, I have to improve my IT skills, maybe my analytical skills, maybe my negotiation skills, maybe my uh, management skills, maybe my planning skills, maybe my leadership skills. So you improve that to help the others. And as a result of that, you will elevate. Like what happens to Buddha, like what happens to Jesus Christ, what happens to Muhammad Prophet, what happens to Bill Gates, what happens to Marcus Zuckerberg, what happens to a London's engineer, what happens to Dr. Kulasinna, engineer Dr. Kulasinna, what happens to engineer Dr. Vimal Surendra, what happens to uh, uh, Jeffrey Bawa, right? And, and, and I, I don't want to name a few of you as name because it's not very uh, you know, suitable. I, I know that there are great town planners. So, heal your heart. 
give metta to everyone. Kindness. That's very important. And the third point is the activation of your gut brain. Gut brain can be activated through practice. For example, if you really want to become a project manager, you have to do projects, you have to do projects, get experience so that you get the guts where I can be a great project manager. If you really want to become a, an entrepreneur, you have to start practicing entrepreneurship little by little. And, and slowly your gut brain will say that I can now be, be a great entrepreneur. If you really want to become an expert in environment, you can start evolving environmental project and practice environmental management or something like that so that your gut brain says that now I'm going to be an expert in environmental Right. So, so likewise, there are there is a method of activating gut brain, but it takes time. Actually speaking, right? It takes time. Uh, please uh, indicate me here whether um, I mean, if I ask you to do a presentation now, ten minutes presentation now in this forum, do you feel? If you feel comfortable, please type yes. If you feel uncomfortable, please type no. If I just pick one of you now, now randomly and ask you to do a presentation 10 minutes now, if you feel comfortable, please type yes. If you feel uncomfortable, please type no. Engineer planner says yes. Engineer Ekanaika, sorry, planner Ekanaika says yes. There are so many yeses because I think many of those who say yes, they have done presentation previously, so their gut brain says, yes, I can do it. If you say no, they haven't done presentation earlier, so their gut brain say no. Right, you got my point. So you have to practice. On the other hand, there's an easy way to stimulate the gut brain. That is actually moving your hip like this and say that I'm going to be a great town and country planner. I'm going to be a world-class town planner. I'm going to help the society. You move your hip, hip brain like this, because when you move your hip brain, what happens is, when you move your hip brain like this, I'm going to be a great town planner. I'm going to contribute a lot to the society. I'm going to be a very, very popular and, and very, very respectable town planner. I'm going to solve global problems. I'm going to be a project manager. Yes, I can. When you hip, move your hip like this, what happens is, your stomach brain, stomach brain get get these affirmations and the stomach brain start thinking like you are a great town planner. So if you really want to be a great town planner, you have to activate your guts. Maybe you can close your door early in the morning once you get up and move your hip like this and say, I'm going to be a great town planner. I can contribute a lot. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to be a consultant and I'm going to do so many things. I'm going to be world class and you can say for five minutes what happens is that your gut brain can be activated. When it comes to the training of military, they are doing so much training to this gut area because otherwise when the terrorist comes from that end, they go back rather than go in front and attack them. Unless their gut brain is torn, they don't go front. So in order to make sure that they go front, they have to boost their confidence. That's why when it comes to the training of uh, army forces, yeah. the navy forces, the air forces, there's so much of training in this gut area to enhance the gut brain, my dear friends. Right? So you have to activate all these three brains to become a great town planner. All right. If you're enjoying this session, please type, I am enjoying. Please type, I am enjoying. Now the time is five minutes past 10. So I think I had to give you a break of five minutes. So let's get a break of five minutes. Thank you very much. There are so much responses. Let's get a break of five minutes and let's start sharp at 10 minutes past 10. Thank you very much for the comments. And I, it looks like many of you are, or almost all of you are enjoying this session. And, 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 and please, let's meet 10 minutes after 10 uh, for the session session. Thank you very much.
Hope you'll have back actually speaking. If you're back, please type yes in the chat box so that I know that how many of you have come back on time so that I can start the session. Please type yes in the chat box if you're back in the class. Amazing, that's amazing, that's amazing. Right, okay. Um, now, uh, I think when it comes to, uh, I, I would like to just ask a question. Uh, how frequently uh, you basically uh, update your CV? How frequently you update your pre, what's the last time you updated your print CV? One month back, one year back, 10 years back, 20 years back. What's the last time you updated your CV? Engineer Plan Prasanna says last month. Plan Ratna says month ago, once a year. Plan Ratna Sekar says once a year. Yesterday, amazing, that's Plan Abhirami, a month ago, yes, last week, two days ago, last year. Two months ago, five months ago, whenever I get a qualification, last month, last week. Okay. Actually speaking, uh, I would suggest you to actually uh, update your CV at least once in, look at your CV once in a week. Look at your CV once in a week so that you will feel like when your CV is not adding anything. It means you are stagnating yourself. At least you have to add a new skill once in a month. New project done by you. Something new. New skill, new project, at least once in a month. Or if you don't look at your CV at least once in a month, what happens is you forget that you have a CV. You forget that you have a profile to do. And you just do a usual doc for 20 years and after 20 years, when it comes to the retirement, you start looking at how can I become a consultant and you may feel like, how can I do my CV? How can I improve my profile? And there's nothing much to put because you have done so many things. You have forgotten all these things. You have done so many national contributions. You have sit in so many actually, uh, you know, great uh, meetings with the nation, the president, the ministers, and you have forgotten all these things after 10, 5, 15 years. So I suggest you to actually look at your CV at least once in a month, at least once in a month, and, and include whatever need to be included. And how many of you have a LinkedIn profile? Please type yes. Please type yes. LinkedIn profile. LinkedIn profile, right. Couple of you have LinkedIn profile. LinkedIn is the next level recruitment. It's not your profile or your CV. It actually opens you for global opportunities, local opportunities. When it comes to my LinkedIn, when the president of the country, the opposition leader, the former opposition leader, the prime minister, the Sri Lanka's richest people, they all have visited my CV last 10 days. So it has that impact. So you must update your LinkedIn with your key skills, a, a proper, proper wording. It's very important. It's very important. And how frequently you have to look to your LinkedIn? How frequently you have to look to your LinkedIn? How frequently? At least once a day, you have to look into your LinkedIn. There can be messages, very important messages uh, from very important people all across the world. If you actually put your LinkedIn properly, daily. I looked at my LinkedIn three times a day because LinkedIn is such an important tool for me. So please update your LinkedIn. Don't put everything there. Just try to understand what you want to become. Try to understand what you want to become and link your past experience to that. Put only the experience which is, which is important what you want to become. Don't put everything because it has limitations. You can't put everything there. So understand what you want to become and align your experience and your wording in such a way that 
you position yourself what you want to become. Have a great profile for you. When you really want to become a consultant, board director, you have to spread a great profile. And sometimes you can't do it alone. You have to get support of a coach. Get the support of a coach to do a great profile, great CV. Question about it. Look at it as an outsider. See how it can be improved. Those are very, very important. Right? Those are very, very important. Your CV is important even once you become the president of the country. Still your profile is important. Still your profile is important. So until your death, your profile is important. Even after your death, sometimes your profile may be important if somebody is going to actually take your name to the next levels. Right? As a role model. So your profile has so much power. So if you if your pro profile does not demonstrate adequate skills, adequate knowledge, it's a problem. So embrace skills and knowledge so that your profile will become a great profile. So please type in the chat box. I am going to start writing a great profile. I'm going to start writing a great profile. Please write it. To do that, my dear friends, you should know what you really want to become. You should have a specific understanding. And there was a comment that you know, need not to become a town planner to do many things. But don't think that way. Your town planning skill set, your time planning mindset, your town planning knowledge set will definitely help you in solving many problems. That's why engineers become CEOs. It's not because of their mechanical engineering or electrical engineering background, but their ability to think. Similarly, town planners, you are given the ability to think, the mindset, the skill set, the analytical mindset, the big picture thinking, and becoming a town planner is a blessing to become a great person. In, solve the problems to become a great politician and so forth, my dear friend. So don't let down your profession, right? So it's, it's a very important profession, right? So, so be happy about it. But, but don't, be, don't be too much addicted to your profile also, your position, your job also, profession also. If you're too much addicted to your profession, you feel jealous about others. It is not a good thing. You have to work in harmony with engineers, architects, chartered accountants, lawyers, environmentalists, politicians, and so forth. We have to respect the professions of others. Right? It's very important. There's no competition, my dear friends. There's no competition. It's only collaboration. And I am unique with one thing, and you are unique with another thing, and there's no competition between you and me. You are an expert in one field, and I'm an expert in another field. That is it. We can synergize for the betterment of both of us, for the betterment of the society, for the betterment of the institution, for the betterment of the country. Otherwise, what happens is, you know, you divide into uh, different groups, and, and when this comes to policy making, you actually drag the policies towards your profession rather than taking a fair decision. That is wrong. That is wrong. You have to be unfair, you have to be fair, and you have to be unbiased, my dear friends. That's very, very important. That is what's called professionalism. And once you become, uh, and, and you have to serve the nation that way, and that is the true professionalism. You have to respect other professions. You have to admire them. You have to learn from them. You have to synergize with them. One plus one should be greater than two. You can synergize with architects. You can synergize with engineers easily. You can synergize with IT. You can synergize with uh, many other professions. And industry 4.0 is coming. Engineers are getting ready. Are you getting ready, my dear friends? We have changed our syllabus. All our engineering syllabuses are changed to industry 4.0. Are you changing your syllabus? Have you changed it? Have you thought about it? And the first industry 4.0 apparel company in the world is established in Sri Lanka in Amilipitiya by an engineer produced from Palmadulla. And it's the first world's industry 4.0 apparel company. It's coming, my dear friends. So town planners must ready to face industry 4.0. Of course, industry 4.0 has lots of application in town planning, country planning and all your areas. 
Have you thought about it? Forget about your age. Irrespective of your age, you can learn some new, new insight about this new technology. And without new technology, you can't go ahead because all the fields are going to be connected to Industry 4.0 in the next 10 years, I'm sure. Please think about it. Adjust yourself. Don't be a dinosaur. Don't be so much proud about your qualification. Don't be so much proud about your knowledge. It's going to be outdated very soon. It's going to be outdated very soon. It's not only your knowledge, but also the knowledge of medical doctors, but also the knowledge of engineers, but also the knowledge of accountants and many other professions. Because Industry 4.0 is coming. So you have to adjust. You can't be a dinosaur. You have to be a cockroach, my dear friends. You should be able to adjust. Cockroach is one of the animals who can change the fastest way. So follow cockroach, not dinosaur. Follow cockroach, not dinosaur. It's very, very important. It's very, very important. Having said that, how many CVs do you have? How many CVs or profiles you have? How many? One or two or five? One. One profile. Very good. One. More than 10. Very good. It, de it depends on your mission. I have four profiles. One is for engineering, other one is for training, the other one is for CEO coaching, the other one is for management. So I set the profile, the most appropriate profile in the right place. So you, I think you might have two, three profiles to send to the right place. If you are doing environmental co consultancy, you should send the profile which is more biased to environment, a little bit of town planning. To get that job done. And similarly, the vice versa. So you must have a couple of profiles. And that's very, very important. That's very, very important. And as I said earlier, when you have the self-love, all this will happen. Whatever the circumstances, love yourself unconditionally. Not 50%, 100%. Some people, they shame to love themselves. That's really bad. You should look young, you should look smart, you should look professional, dress great, cut your hair nicely. I couldn't cut my hair because the saloons are not open, actually speaking, and I'm afraid to go there. And, and adjust your eyebrows, they are nice. That's very important. Then you feel pride about yourself, proud about yourself. That pride will bring lots of energy. Jack Ware says, if you really want to become an, a leader, you have to have four E's and one P. You must have energy. Positive energy, not negative energy. When I was applying for my charter, one of my colleague engineer, a senior of mine, 20 years senior to me, he sent a petition to Institute of Engineers Sri Lanka saying that Rani Sukhadas is not deserved for chartered engineer. 20 years, 20 pages, 20 pages, lots of negative energy. I extend metta to him. So much of metta, tons of metta. Positive energy. Ultimately, the Council of Institute of Engineers Sri Lanka decided that Ranir Sukhadas is right, and that person was jealously attacking me. Professional jealousy, professional jealousy. Later, I became a senior senior manager in the same company, and he was just manager. You should send metta. Positive energy. Metta is positive energy. Jack Will says, if you really want to be a leader in whatever the field, you must have energy. You must be able to spread energy, ability to energize others. The first is you must have energy. You must have energy. You must be able to energize others. You must be able to energize others. You must have an edge, technical or management edge. And you must be able to execute or store result. And you must have the passion. I'm nothing singular. Passion about what you do. You must have energy. You must be able to energize others. You must be having have edge. And you must be able to execute or store result. And you must have the passion. And if you're CV and profile can actually demonstrate some of them, 
in the indirect way, I'm sure your profile will be very much attracted. And you, are, you will be paid a better salary, better compensation, better consultancy fee, my dear friends. So think what is your age? Think whether you have positive energy or negative energy. How powerful is a smile? Right? Sometimes your smile may work 100,000. Sometimes your smile might work 1 million, maybe 1 million dollars. Energy, but the positive energy. That's what Jack Wells says. Ability to energize others with metta, kindness, and positive energies. Ability to have an edge. What is your edge? You have to understand what is your edge, my dear friend. Please type what is your edge as a town planner? What is your edge? What is your edge? What is your edge as a town planner? What is your edge actually speaking? What is your age? It's not your qualification. It's not your experience. It can be a combination of all these things. What is your age as a town planner? Patience, amazing. 41 years of experience. Okay, that's amazing. But, but that 41 years of experience should be able to convert to an age, actually speaking. Just because you say 41 years of experience, it doesn't uh, give you so much value, but you should be able to convert that experience to age. What is your age? It's not number of years, but rather what you have built during that one number of years. For example, my age as an engineer is the ability to think creatively and innovatively. Not my BSc in civil engineering, not my MSc in construction in, uh, concrete engineering, not my PhD in construction supply chain risk management, not the fact that I have trained 500,000 people, not the fact that I'm working with 400 plus organization, but the fact that I have 21 years of experience, not the fact that you know I'm a senior lecturer, nothing. Not the fact that I'm a chartered engineer, not the fact that I'm a project management professional. My edge is actually ability to think innovatively and creatively. Nothing else. And industry pays me for that as an engineer or as a trainer. You have to understand your edge, my dear friends. Take little time. Attahi natta nonoato, right? Tamanga nigani matama honda nigani ma. You have to understand your age, my dear friends. That's very, very important. Now, I would like to actually uh, go to a little concept, a concept that I learned in my life. The best learning that I ever happened to me. I was studying engineering up to PhD and chartered engineer. I was studying business up to MBA. I was studying SIMA, SIM, law and etc. But I got my best learning from my elder son. Six years back, when he was just four years. I was prepared to do a presentation uh, in a leading bank, actually speaking, that was my first banking training. And I usually show my presentation to my wife, she's a child accountant by profession, and, and she usually correct my presentation to the max because she's a great wife, actually speaking. And one of her edges actually the ability to find the, the gaps, the loopholes, the mistakes, being a child accountant. So I show my presentation to her. She usually corrected to the hundred plus percent plus, uh, you know perfect stage. So she did a great job despite her. She came home after a busy, tiring work. So I was so happy now. And my son just approached me saying, Tati, you talk a little bit. He want to come to my lab and see what's happening on my computer. And I just took him to my lab and I just got a SMS from the management of that bank. And he was saying that he's going to send a, he was going to send a vehicle to me uh, to uh, you know, pick me from Kolkata to call. And I was just replying within a couple of seconds. The son who approached me saying, Tat, you talk a little bit. He has entirely, entirely, entirely deleted my presentation in such a way that it's not even available in the recycle bin. At that very point, I realized that two takya ne goda lazy, habai, two takya ne goda, 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 goda. Little bit is extremely easy, but little bit is extremely, extremely, extremely powerful. Honyam in Tamil. Honyam is extremely easy, but Honyam is extremely, extremely, extremely powerful. Two takya ne goda lazy, habai, two takya ne goda, 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 goda. So, my dear friends, you can apply this com concept for your professional development. And I was stuck because now there is no presentation. I was so upset and, and I, I didn't know what to do. And, and, and I just kept my two fingers together because when, when, when you keep these two fingers together, you become relaxed because your brain 
the point where the you get tension in the brain will relapse and then you know that lord buddha is like this in uh, the, the god kathragama god suman saman is like that when you do yoga you keep like this and and, and even it's proven in western medicine uh, and psychology and, and and neuroscience and i just kept these two fingers together and and when i kept these two fingers together for 10 minutes my stress faded away and i was connected my mind was connected to the infinite intelligence and it gives me a message and it don't worry go to the bank tomorrow without presentation talk about chutta the power of being chutta i went to the bank and talk about the power of chutta for one whole one day i wrote that they improve their personality tava chutta improve their attraction tava chutta by wearing the nice dresses improve their customer care by tava chutta by listening to the customers a little bit better and understand the needs of the customer a little bit better i want them to actually plan a little bit better organize a little bit better keep the bank premises a little bit better keep the you know customer promises a little bit better uh, could be accurate a little bit better um, and, and and do everything a little bit better in such a way that you know the bank can elevate the next level i was able to transform that bank the entire banking system to uh, the next level within three months using this concept the power of chutta chutta a little bit is extremely easy but it's extremely powerful now you may think that you are doing your maximum at the moment as a founder and you may think that as a leader of a government organization you are doing maximum it's something like that i will show you exercise i keep my hands like that you can stand with me and and you can keep your legs fixed onto the floor and without distorting your neck or backbone you can just turn to the max in clockwise like i do get ready 1 2 3 i can see the door on the edge of the door that is i want to be I can see the edge of this big door. That is, those are the two maximum points that I can see. Two maximum points that I can see. Now I have a dream. I want to go beyond that tower two tank without violating the law that is the foot, without distorting my health that is the neck and the backbone. And I have a dream to go beyond that a little bit more, a little bit more, my dear friends. Now I have the dream. I have the determination. I know that I can go to the chunta beyond what I saw, what I saw earlier. Get ready, Ranil. Get ready. One, two, three, max. One, two, three, max. My dear friends, I went beyond more or less close to zero point seven five meters. In the first attempt, I thought that's the maximum that I can see. But with the dream and determination, I was I was actually trying to go beyond a tower chunta a little bit. I I went beyond zero point seven five meters. Similarly, as a town and country planning professional, I know that you can do tower to tuck your organization. You can add value a little bit. You can do a little bit more. You can do a little bit, my dear friends, and that little bit is extremely powerful. To tuck can be quite crazy, but by turning up to that way, I deleted my entire presentation. But it's so powerful. Similarly, one to the power three hundred sixty-five. One to the power three hundred sixty-five is one multiplied by one multiplied by one multiplied by is equal to one. If you actually add zero point zero one into one, it becomes one point zero one. One point zero one to the power three hundred sixty-five is one point zero one multiplied by one point zero one multiplied by one point zero one multiplied. That is thirty-seven point eight. So if you can improve your skills. the signature skills the core skills that you must have as a as a town and country planner every day for 365 days that's one full year my dear friends you will become 37.8 times better town and country planner than today if you can improve that if you can improve one single skill about town planning if you can improve your communication skills for example if you can improve people skills if you can improve your project management skills for example if you can improve whatever the technical or it skills you really want to improve to go to your next level my dear friends 0.01 equivalent every day for 365 days you will become 37.8 times better than you are today isn't that interesting concept if it is interesting concept please type chuttak please type chuttak in the chat box chuttak in the chat box chuttak a little bit konyam right Please type chuttak in the chat box. Because chuttak ya ni goda klesi, tabe chuttak ya ni goda 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 balamat. So I want you to change tabe chuttak a little bit. I want you to improve your skill tabe chuttak a little bit. I want you to think the holistic big picture tabe chuttak a little bit. I want you to become professionalism tabe chuttak a little bit. I want you to become fair tabe chuttak a little bit. 
I want you to understand your team. Have a chutta a little bit. I want you to demonstrate your leadership skills. Have a look at the chutta a little bit. I want you to look at your CV. Have a chutta a little bit. I want you to improve your communication skills. Have a chutta a little bit. I want you to get this industry four point or knowledge. Have a chutta a little bit. I want you to become you know great heart brainer. Have a chutta a little bit. I want you to understand people. Have a chutta a little bit. I want you to love yourself. Have a chutta a little bit. I want you to love your family. Have a chutta a little bit. I want you to be patient. Have a chutta a little bit. Chutta ke ne gora messi. Aba yeh gora 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 gora. If you can actually improve a little bit chutta ke every day in all aspect of your life, my dear friends, and I'm sure it is going to be go to the next 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 level in the class, right? If this is an interesting concept, and if you can apply that. Please type. It's an interesting concept. Please type. It's an it, it, it's 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 an interesting concept because too tacky and you go dark lazy. I am not asking you to change a lot. I am not asking you to make a radical changes. I am not asking you to change 360 degrees. I am not asking you to change the fullest. I am asking you to change or improve a little bit. Too tacky, a little bit. Too tacky with respect to your self, with respect to your. Appearance as a professional with respect to your skills as a professional with respect to your dreams and, and vision as a professional with respect to your knowledge with respect to your understanding other professionals working with other professionals humility and all these type of thing a little bit and chuttak is very very important my dear friends right chuttak kya ne godaan lazy abai chuttak kya ne godaan 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 malavat my dear friends that's extremely extremely important right having said that my dear friends. When it comes to your professional career, you should show results. If you really want to go up in the career ladder, there is no shortcuts. You have to exceed the expectations of your boss or your role. You have to exceed the expectations. That's number one. If you are asked to do hundred thing, you have to do at least hundred and five. But if you do ninety, you think you must be given A? No, it is not. In the examination, when when you are asked to get hundred marks, when you get fifty marks, we pass you. When you get sixty marks, we give you B. When you get seventy five marks, we give you, you give you A. When you get eighty five, we give you A plus. But in the career, it's not like that. If you are asked to do hundred, you have to do hundred and five. Results. I'm not talking about the actions. I'm not. I'm talking about the results. You have to exceed the expectation about of your client. If I don't exceed the expectation of you now, I am not invited by your institute next time. That's the reality. That's the reality. If you want to go up the ladder, you have to exceed the expectation of your client or boss. That's number one. Number two, you have to actually align to the value set of your client. Attitudes, values are very, very important. That's very, very important. And number three, you have to show your potential. How to show your potential? One is your CV profile. The best way to show your potential is actually you have to actually show some solid work you have so far done in the past. It is not the number of experience, but how much of value addition you have made to various projects. That is known as solid experience. I know that you have 35 years of experience. You have forgotten. You have done thousands of projects and forgotten all about it. Don't worry. At least try to recall them, some of them, the key projects, and incorporate them in the CV. And one of my friend who got a PhD from Cambridge, a batchmate, came to see me with teary eyes. He was telling me that Rani, I, I have a PhD from Cambridge. I'm an engineer, chartered engineer, PhD from Cork, Cambridge. I joined this company in UK 15 years back. Last 15 years, I got excellent, excellent, excellent every year progress review. But I joined as an engineer. I'm still an engineer. I never got a promotion. 
Then I told him that in UK, whether you got a promotion or not, whether you are engineer, butcher, or bus driver, it's, it's, it's anywhere you are drawn. So don't worry about it as long as you are paid well. But he's, then he said, well, still, but I have a problem. What's the problem? Can you remember the girl called Vilati? Our batch. Yeah, yeah, I can remember. You are the one who gave her kuppi. Yes, I'm the one who gave her kuppi. And she passed exam very difficult way. That's why I helped her. Yeah, I can remember. What's the problem now? No, Machang, she joined my company. So I said, what a good thing. Your friend in the university joined your company. It's a good thing. Why are you worried? No, Machang, she joined only two years back. Then what happens? Now, she's the director of engineering. She's only having PSC engineering. And chartered engineer, nothing PhD, nothing MSc. So I'm so worried. I'm the one who taught her. Now she's my bosses, 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 boss. Six layers about me within two years. And usually in the UK, if you really want to become the engineering director, you have to be a male, right? They talk about the gender balance, but but in UK, if you really want to become engineering director, you have to be a male, and you have to be a UK, not Irish, but this black. Sri Lankan engineer, a lady, become engineering director. I asked why, Maja, what happened? No, Maja, those days, even the university, I mean, he, he was reminding me. Even in the university, when the canteen food is not good, she went to the canteen man and, you know, confronted him. When the teacher is teach, was teaching, when the teacher was not teaching to the level where we can't understand, she raised her hand and said, sir, I can't understand it. In the laboratory classes, when we keep silent, she asks hundreds of questions. And out of 100 questions, 99 are foolish questions. That's the interesting thing. Similarly, when she joined this organization as an engineer, she forcefully go to board meeting and give her inputs. She forcefully write emails saying that I have this idea, that idea. When the company was struggling with economic downturn, she forcefully went out of her boss job and as an engineer and bought new business, new projects. And as such, within two years, she has climbed up to the direct engineering. Whereas my friend with a PhD from Cambridge, when he asked to join a meeting, he goes and sleep. Or he goes and uh, you know, uh, tap the computer. When he is asked a question about technical matter, he says, I will analyze this and come back to you in a week. Even though he performs excellently for past 15 years, my friend with PhD in Cambridge could not show his potential. But this girl with BSc engineering and charter, only that two years experience in UK, this particular company, she was able to show her interest about the organization. She was going extra miles. Her attitudes were so good. And she was trying to give her fullest support to the organization going out of the way. And she was bringing business, despite she's an engineer, Helping help in hand, help in mindset, ended up as, as a director. Isn't that interesting? If this is interesting, please type interesting. Please type interesting. My dear friends, there's no shortcuts. You have to perform exceeding expectations. And you have to show your potential. Unless you show your potential, I'm sorry, you will not get opportunities. That's a bitter reality. To show potential, you should be able to work and deliver results. And that is not sufficient. I know that there are great engineers, great town planners who can deliver results, but they don't know how to talk about it. So you should be able to deliver results and you should be able to talk about it. You should be able to present in, in your CV and profile and your LinkedIn profile. You should be able to talk about it when you face the interview. And there are great engineers, there are great uh, town planners who has the fullest technical knowledge, but who doesn't know how to talk to the point, how to sell their skills. You should be able to sell it, my dear friends. That's very, very important. Let me talk about myself a little bit uh, to explain this. Actually, I'm coming from a very rural village called Hidurangal in between Halibur and Kiriyal. I studied from, uh, from a village school, Hidalangala Vidyale, where we didn't have a uniform to wear. We just, our, our school didn't have a uniform. We just wore whatever the t-shirts, different color to our school. Because I, I, I was a son of a principal of another school. I wore a slippers, but my friends, they just 
came to school barefoot. And, 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 and I failed EFI scholarship because we were in the playground and I, that school gave me creativity because, you know, I mean, even in US, top class schools, they don't have uniforms, primary levels, because they know that when once you give the uniform, the child's mindset will be confined to one system where they don't think creatively. So my school is like US's first class school as, as for my analysis now, actually speaking. So I, I failed EFI scholarship. Then my father put me to Halifax Central College and then uh, I, I decided to learn after that and I I, I I was able to secure one or second in whole grade out of uh, 11 classes uh, in my grade all levels up to all levels actually speaking and when, when I was in the 10th class we, we had actually a class called clever class and then there was English sir and then he was actually uh, teaching to only one student that says son of his uh, son of his friend who's another english teacher he never looked at me right and 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 um, and uh, so i went to my mom's with tears saying this sir is only looking at one person he's not looking at any of us my mom actually took, took the following day english lesson and she asked the difficult words i have I so, and when she know the words that I don't know, but she knows, for example, I didn't know, say, I didn't know, so what she, what she did was, she took the extra book and write way and put it single again, and put it single again. And then she, finished the words she knew and then she went to my father and asked to know words he knew and then she used this dictionary this is 120 years old see the dictionary published in 1901 and wrote the remaining words where i actually by heart and all these things and went to the class the following day and somehow got the attention of the sir and ultimately out of 420 students in my grade we only got two d passes for english and one for me actually speaking and then I entered University of Morocco. Then I worked in Singapore for mission project Sri reclamation. I went to Singapore taking a risk without a job. And within two days, I was able to find a job for Singapore Mr. Lee Kranu's company. After spending four or five months in Singapore, I realized that I am not growing. So I took a risk and came back to Sri Lanka without resigning from that company because I, I realized that even though payment was really good, I am not growing there. So I came back to Sri Lanka. So in Sri Lanka, I was actually without a job for one month. And there was a job in the newspaper requesting 20 years of experience out of which 15 years must be senior management experience you must have be having charter msc and mba and i just applied it with six month experience and one qualification bsc engineering and i'm happy to say i passed the first interview i passed the second interview i passed the third interview i passed the fourth interview i passed the fifth interview and the sixth interview was with the medical professor she's going to check my a mental ability suitability to for the senior management position and she interviewed me for two hours and after two hours this medical professor told me that mr sugata engineer sugata dasa even though you have six month experience you your brain performs truly well in imperfect circumstances so that i will recommend you for senior management position which requires 20 years so i got the job so i got the job and my final interview was with the managing director of the company usually interviewed for one hour and, and I went to him and his accent was Australian and I was so fear about it. And, and, and he asked me, what do you know about Holcim? At that point, Holcim was world's second largest cement company. And Holcim Lanka was Sri Lanka's second largest cement company. I never said it's the second largest cement company. What I said is that I know that for sure that Holcim Global can become world's largest cement company in the next two years time. And I can ensure, I can help you to make sure that Holcim Lanka will become Sri Lanka's largest cement company within the next one year. And the CEO said that I don't want to interview you. I would like to recruit you. And this is the shortest interview I ever had in my life. I usually interview one person for one hour, and I only interviewed for two minutes. My dear friends, why I said this is actually you must talk to the point. You must talk positively. You must bring your creativity and imagination to the interview board. And then that's why I told this simple story. I think the time is up for the questions. Uh, and, and so I would like to give uh, the opportunity for you to ask the questions so that I can, I have 10 minutes to share with you. I'm sorry, I took five more minutes more than expected so that I can, but even though I have another session at 11.15, I can spend with you up to 11.10.
where necessary uh, and I, it's enough to have five minutes break so so you can ask questions uh, in next 10 to 15 minutes thank you very much thank you dr anil uh, do we have any question from the participants? Uh, we haven't seen any particular questions in the chat box, but uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, please feel free to type it or even uh, raise your hand and uh, put it to Dr. Anand. Uh, just a question that, uh, that came to us earlier, Dr. Anil. Uh, when, when going for interviews, what do you feel are the kind of key areas that people should or the kind of uh, focus on when, when going for an interview? I mean, sometimes it's not really the technical, uh, technical know-how or knowledge that uh, interviewers are particularly concerned about. So what do you think are some of the more important areas that they should focus on? And especially in this kind of uh, COVID situation where a lot of the interviews are now being done online and you don't have that personal uh, connection and things like that. How can you really like uh, present yourself in a way uh, that's uh, uh, now become the new, new medium of communication? Excellent, excellent. Actually speaking, when it comes to interviews, you have to research about the organization that you are going to for the interviews. You, you should know in and out of that organization. Vision, mission goals, the top management, the culture. And you should dress according to the culture of that organization. For example, town and country planners, I'm sure you have some opportunities in the IT field, like IFS, Virtusa, even though you, you don't think that way. Because IFS, Virtusa, they develop software as to manage you know, buildings, manage towns, manage uh, various type of infrastructure. I'm sure you can add a lot of value. So if you are going for an interview in IFS, you have to wear a denim and t-shirt and go. You see my point? On the other hand, town and country planners may have lots of job opportunities in World Bank, United Nations, Asian Development Bank, uh, and, and some donor agencies like that. In that case, you have to respect their culture and wear a coat and go. You see my point? And now may, you may be wondering whether why I'm wearing a coat here. It's not because I'm a slave or British or something like that. Why I'm wearing a coat is because, actually speaking, it's easy because I, because I, because I have five four or five training programs every day, it's difficult to iron my shirt in between the short interval. And it's, there's a high chance of getting this, uh, you know, dirt. That's why I put the coat here to, to cover up my uh, unironed places in my shirt. That's number one reason. Number two reason is actually because I'm a little thin. I look smart when I dress a coat. Not because I'm a slave of British or uh, the, the Western system. I wear a coat because it, it gives me confidence and I look smarter than usual shirt. So, so you, you should choose your dress based on the culture of the organization, right? There can be a place where you have to wear a national lingo. For example, particularly if you really want to choose politics as your career, actually speak, right? So, so and, and in fact, you should research about the organization and you should actually understand what would, could be the question that can be asked and you should prepare some answers, short and sweet answers beforehand. And, and, and you should somehow emphasize your strengths within two, three minutes uh, because the first impression is the most impression, impressive thing. While answering, you should be able to sell your points. You should be able to sell your experience. You should be able to sell your qualifications. You should be able to sell your imagination and creativity. So I think I have given a short answer for that. And, and when it comes to Zoom interviews, I, I suggest you to have a calm environment. At least if your home is not having a calm environment, go to your car and face the interview, right? That's much better than having a disturbing environment. Switch on your video, talk politely, be with a smile, because a smile can bring you so much of positive marks, actually speak. Don't be afraid, right? If you go with so much of greediness, what happens is you get stuck. You get stuck. So, so you just go to interview with open mindset, my dear friends. That's very, very important. And then very calm and you know, relaxed mindset with the proper smile uh, and that will serve the purpose. I hope I answered it shortly. I think so. Uh, we have just one question from Planner Ratnayaka. If resources, example, money is a problem, 
to go for our dreams how should we approach uh, how should we approach going it if i said i think resources the yeah. resources is limited the resources can be time and money if it is limited don't worry start counting the blessings you have a degree you have professional qualification you have 10 years of experience you have some money say 1000 rupees and you you have food to eat don't think about what you don't have don't think about the fact that you don't have money as much as your friend or something like that that will never make you negative think about the blessings you have if you have 10 minutes if you only have 10 minutes to focus about your future career use that 10 minutes wisely rather than blaming your wife or your kids for not giving you time use that 10 minutes to uh, polish your cv within that 10 minutes to the maximum way right because i mean we we are we are very good at complaining go to facebook see how many complaints we try to find some faults in somebody else if somebody is doing a perfect job we we are really jealous and we want to find something bad about him and you know market it the per facebook that is our mindset negative mindset that is really bad assume your father is the bread and butter maker of your company you are blaming your father your mother is blaming your father your brother is blaming your father your sister is blaming your father and you put that into facebook also now how can your father focus on bread and butter earning because he has so much of pressure coming from the inside family itself so i think ladies and gentlemen you have to be positive rather than finding faults finding what you don't have you have to become a problem solver rather than blaming the government blaming the country blaming the uh, you know covid blaming your bosses blaming your profession blaming your seniors blaming your institute you have to find solutions to find solution the easiest way is counting the blessings you have rather than counting the things you don't have right so if you can start the counting the blessings you have i think the money may not be a very big problem and of course you can go to a bank and get a business loan if you really want to start a entrepreneurial venture and and you can prepare a great business plan if you have a positive mind with right direction right numbers etc so that the management will allow you i mean 10 million from the bank to start a business actually speaking and if you have that positive mind maybe a rich person will join with you to put up a good company actually speaking and if you lack time uh, you you will feel like becoming productive in utilizing 10 minutes you have 15 minutes you have my dear friend so so you have to count the blessings and please stop counting the negative side of others negative side of you negativity is you have problems the problems is everywhere as i said you will not put the good problems so don't worry about them count the blessings and focus on that i think we have time for one last question uh, there are several questions but maybe i'll narrow it down to one uh, i like your point of what you said uh, to that dr ranil it's basically taking advantage and uh, of of what you do have the resources time or money or what you do have and putting it to good use so that yeah yeah i agree with you on that uh, just maybe one last question is um, uh, till we get our dream or destination job how do we motiv- motivate ourselves when it takes too long and how do you uh prevent yourself from getting demo with demotivated i think that's a, that's a jo- that's a question that's universally uh, uh applicable to everybody whether you're searching for a job or whether you've been in a position for a long time demotivation is something that we all have to uh deal with so how 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 do you advise that we should uh, stay more friends any, any fool can be demotivated any fool can find problems any fool can be discouraged any fool can find faults and say that because of this i cannot go to my dream any fool can do it but i am sure as town and kind kind of black professionals you all are intelligent people and if you have little bit of intelligence my dear friends you have to understand the reality there is no super highways there is no super highways to a career dream to a life dream and you have to face atalo the hammer when you face difficulties sufferings uh, setbacks uh, resistance problems you have to convert that negative energy into tons of positive energy when my friend wrote a petition to me to stop engineer sri lanka when i become an engineer i would i would have easily give up becoming a chartered engineer but i didn't do so 
while putting metta i decided that i must explore my potential and i explored it actually speaking and ultimately he had to actually become a friend with me uh, later because uh, to uh, succeed his uh, some of his things so there can be barriers there can be resistance there can be problems there can be political intervention but again i am saying that as town and country planners you should be able to manage politicians you must be having the techniques tactics the intelligence the jane the the stanoj the prajna the and everything to manage politician and there's no point to blame in them right you should be able to somehow get them to the right track it's not easy i agree but you should be able to be clever to influence them it is that sri lankans professionals are not clever that politician took the upper hand in the time of prime minister president prime minister sirima o bandar naik she go to uh, the place where the big need to be constructed in engineers car she comes to engineers office she used to come to engineers office she went to uh, the relevant place from engineers car with the engineer in the back seat and she got the advice of the engineer to decide the bridge now it's not like that because our professional have become very uh, you know political worshiping unclever mindset of uh, not a mindset of thinking that we can't manage it we can't influence it but i think we should be able to do it my dear friends as long as we use the brain properly no point of blaming the politician but but we should be able to actually get them to the right track as much as we can and at least we should be able to do our two cents regarding our country rather than complaining okay so all the negative energies must be converted to positivities all the burdens all the resistance all the complaints all the petitions all the uh, you know disturbance from seniors or juniors should be able to convert to tons of positive energy to make our dreams to help our mother country any fool can migrate from sri lanka saying that this is the best worst country to live but only intelligent people can stay here and help the country to grow there's no point of blaming each other rather we have to count the blessings and any there is no perfect people how come the president be perfect how come the opposition leader can be perfect how come the ministers be perfect how come the chairman of town and county planning be perfect how come you because you are not perfect according to buddhism only perfect person is lord buddha even rahats are not perfect they have their weaknesses so don't expect perfectionism from others and understand the reality try to give your fullest the way that you can don't complain when you have this complaint mindset i think you are going to go towards a disaster called depression uh, uh dr anil do you have time for one more i know that you have uh, yeah. several other sessions that you have planned uh, do you have time for one more question uh, yeah. okay i think one last question that we have is how do you think that um, senior professional professionals can inspire juniors and young planners to uh, on their career path because uh, uh, the, i mean yeah yeah uh, first of all i disagree with your question because okay. i mean we think we juniors think senior should inspire us how come seniors are now bit old now their energy is less now they have self problem they have their family problems they have their financial issues they have their their things so here it is we should not expect seniors to come and motivate us seniors should motivate us. juniors and juniors should motivate seniors two way right and juniors must be down to earth enough to go to seniors and you know get their best actually speaking and on the other hand seniors must be having politeness and 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 responsible citizenship to show the path to juniors so it is two way it is two way actually so seniors should share their wisdom while juniors should be able to take that wisdom seniors and juniors must work together and and there are different campaigns you know i mean senior oriented campaigns junior oriented these are bad things we all are same professionals having different skills juniors may be good at one thing and seniors may be good at another thing we must work together don't have boundaries there are campaigns which are focusing on feminism there are campaigns which are focusing on masculinism 
Both are wrong. We have to focus on humanity. Your mother is a woman and your father is a man. And why are you going for uh, human, uh, uh, sort of extremism, actually speaking? Similarly, there is nothing called senior junior. We all are town planners, country planners, professionals, a team. And then we have to work as a team. And youngsters should be able to bring their best to the project. And seniors should bring their best to the project. And then you should be having generous mindset to help each other. Who are going to hold the And if they are working on it, and they are going to help you, 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 and they That's what's your duty, my dear friends, because we all are product of public education. We should serve our mother country the way that we can. The way that we can. That's two cents, my dear friends. So there is nothing called senior junior. You have to mix and do it. And everybody is senior. Why should you become a professional? Right? Everybody is senior. Everybody is a professional. Maybe juniors can bring different ideas, genius points, where the seniors can accept, welcome these points with their wisdom and mix that, that with their experience to prepare a great piece of work for the country. So that's the most important thing. So you have to help each other. You have to motivate each other. You have to support each other. You have to take care of each other. That's my point. Uh, I, I think we're out of time. There are a few other questions, Dr. Rani, but I think we're out of time because you need to leave at 11.15. Uh, uh, so maybe we will wrap up the session now. So and thank you. Give me one minute. Give me yeah, one minute. Sure. You can contact me through uh, my telephone number. Or triple seven. Two two four zero three eight. Okay. Maybe and maybe what we fact, will. You can actually uh, use my Facebook uh, public figure on this to become a good follow me because I my usual one doesn't have vacancies for you. You can follow my YouTube and you can actually follow my son's YouTube. The 10-year-old unit who told me the greatest lesson, amazing unit. Actually, my son is teaching how to think quick, how to think quick, amazing unit. You can go to amazing unit. And then I, I'm sure you, it might sometimes inspire you to think differently. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will definitely share those uh, details uh, uh, with the members, uh, Dr. Ranil, and maybe if there are some additional questions, we can also maybe uh, compile them together and share them with you if you have time to get back to us uh, on that. Um, so I'll conclude today's uh, session with a big thank you to Dr. Ranil. It was a very engaging and inspiring discussion. And uh, I, I, I hope and I think uh, it was useful to a lot of our members. And uh, I hope we're all inspired to take the principles of Tao Chuktak and apply it to our jobs and uh, uh, everyday work um, from tomorrow onwards. And um, yes, uh, thank you again, Dr. Ranil. And uh, just before we wrap up, uh, I just want to remind everybody that uh, there is a feedback form that will be emailed to you. Uh, so if you can fill that and uh, send it back, it, it helps the committee uh, uh, better prepare these uh, uh, sessions to meet your needs. So we'd we'll be very helpful if uh, you send them back. And uh, uh, the certificates also for your participation will be emailed to you. So with that, I wish you all a very good afternoon and thank you for your participation. And uh, yes, let's conclude it like that. Thank you very much. Good luck. All the very thank best. You. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for everybody, mm -hmm. especially Dr. Ranil Chupitna. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you.